Hi everybody, today I have another spread in my handmade pocket junk art journal. It's been a while that I made a video um, in this journal and today I thought I will just record the process. I wanted to make something quickly and something where I can use uh, my um, my boxes with uh, the collage paper I have laying around. I'm adhering the bits and pieces with my glue stick and this is a design paper from my scrapbooking paper pad and I will also use some handmade papers which might be jelly prints or leftover paint papers, all that kind of stuff that I have in my boxes and I always, um, I have four of them for the smaller bits and pieces and they are a little bit sorted uh, color wise and I try to never get them full um, because I think if you have too many little paper pieces and um, collage bits you will never use them if they became become too much um, so I try to get rid of them before this happens, but it's very rarely that I throw some of them away. Maybe sometimes when I have some pieces that I've never been using and I don't like them anymore, then I throw them away. I'm just playing intuitively today. I grab papers where I feel it fits the page. I decided to go for a bluish kind of spread today. And yeah, that's the reason why I pick greens and blues and cool colors for the collage. What I love about collage is um, you can always change the whole page uh, by adding transparent layers of color on top which I really enjoy doing. Um, and it's sometimes such a surprise what happens to a collage background when you add some glazing with colors. And it's not very important which colors you're using. I often use uh, watercolor mediums, just like watercolors or um, Derwent Inktense pencils, for example, or the Art Graph tailor shape that I've used in my last video on Wednesday. Um, it's not that important. A little bit more important is that it's transparent, so you cannot um, get the same result with acrylic paints, but with transparent acrylic inks. In case you are new to my channel, um, welcome. And if you're interested in how I made this journal, I will link up the video in the info cards on the top right corner. And then you can just make your own art journal. That's something I really love doing because it's not so intimidating to get started in a handmade book, I would say, especially when it's filled with these kind of chunky pages um, and it all, also I feel it looks uh, nice. It has some special character compared to a board sketchbook where you create the pages in. I enjoy both types of working. I really enjoy working in a usual art journal sketchbook, but I also really love to get messy in these handmade ones. I will now cover the pages with a layer of clear gesso. I started doing this um, a while ago now and I really love it. In the past I often didn't add any uh, la uh, layering on top of that collage, just I started with paint and all kind of stuff. But the, the clear gesso has such a nice finish 
it gives you um, such a, a, a texture that works with every other medium. It also works so well with watercolors and it's very transparent. I have the one from Liquitex, but I also have the one from PBO, which is also super nice to work with. And yeah, I just love, love this medium. It's, um, it's one of my, of, it's one of the things I would recommend if you're starting out getting yourself some clear gesso. I'm pressing the papers down and I'm removing the over amount of the gesso with that catalyst blade. And once it's dry, I am going to add color and this time I decided to use my soft pastels to add color. If you have soft pastels laying around, you can try if they work with water. Not all soft pastels do this, but some give you really amazing results because they don't have that water, water soluble binder, which makes everything run smoothly. Um, it just dissolves the pigments and that they, they, um, they kind of granulate when you mix them with water and give you such a nice texture. I really often use this technique when I'm sketching to create backgrounds and such. Um, so in case you have soft pastels, try if they work with water. Some have kind of a resistance against water and that I think depends on the binder. The ones I'm using here are the, the ones from Sennelier and I have also some from Schminke. They don't have much binder inside and that um, works perfectly with water. If you don't have any soft pastels, that's not no problem at all. You can use any kind of watercolor type of stuff to recreate something similar. You can, for example, use the Derwent Intense Pencils or any other water soluble pencil. You can use watercolors or maybe the brush or powders. All that kind of stuff will work just fine. I'm bringing in also a little bit of a darker yellow because I feel that fits the blue green background quite well. And I try to not mix them all too much. I try to give them their room to sit in. And I also try to have some lighter areas left on the page. Once the pastels are dry on my page, I, I sprayed them with a fixative. Um, it's a bit, I would say it, it um, protects the page a little bit because uh, pastels can be quite messy. I now go in with some stamping. Um, by the way, if you do some stamping uh, with a non-water based medium, don't add a fixative spray on top. That will not work because your stamping will bleed. Um, it's always hard to stamp in this bulky, junky journal, but as this is only some background stamping, I don't really mind if the images are not perfect. And I lay a piece of foam underneath my page, so stamping gets a little bit better. The leaves I've stamped are from our pencil marks number seven stamp set, and I will link, um, I will link them up in the description so you can find them. And the numbers are my go-to background stamp. I use them so often, and they are from the mixed media marks stamp set. I'm using the black stays on to stamp here. Um, as the base of everything is acrylic, I want to have an ink pad that dries quickly and stays on, almost dries immediately on any surface.
for this last image I've used a orangey yellow color I believe it's the orange test from Stazon and here I'm making some turquoisey ink splatters with acrylic ink and I'm also using some white acrylic ink to bring in some highlights Once my ink is dry, I'm going to do some mark making with the Neo colors in similar colors that I have already on my page. I'm using a gold ochre and some kind of chrom chromium oxide green, I believe. Um, just making some marks and some scribbles on my page to bring in more layers and texture that creates depth on your page and interest. I'm adding even more marks with a Posca paint pen and the yellow is almost the same that I have on my background and I'm just making some dots here and there. I will also add some kind of focal image to the page and I'm using some leaves that I have created with my sketchy leaves stencil and brush powders. There is already a video tutorial up on my YouTube channel which will be linked in the top right corner in the info cards um, where I'm sharing how I make these. So if you like to see that, check out that video. I'm adhering them with some liquid glue to the page. Um, I made them with watercolor paper and they are quite heavy and I have to press them down a while until they are sticking to the page. I'm also going to adhere kind of a title to my page or a sentiment. I've stamped it to some old, um, an old paper pad which is already a little bit yellowish and I stamped it with an olive green. Yes, and that's my finished spread. I really like how it turned out and I would definitely use this technique a bit more often. I hope you enjoyed this video um, and I wish you a lovely rest of the week. Bye!